Chris, I don't think that could have gone much better for Loyola. Well, <laughs> as, a, as a head coach coaching your first game with Drew Valentine, they really executed everything to a tee. There was no hesitancy. They played well together as a team, and he has to be happy going into the locker room here at halftime. There's no doubt. The Loyola Ramblers, 11 of 25 from three-point land. And it wasn't just one guy, right? Lucas Williamson started this game early with a few threes, and it seemed to ignite the rest of the group. They're really looking for the three as well, Jordan. When we see the Ramblers come down in transition, they're spotting up and looking for the three. Last season, they were looking to work it around, get a shot close to the basket. Completely different offensive transition look this season. So the Ramblers looked incredible in the first 20 minutes, but if you're Juan Dixon, what do you say to them at halftime? Well, again, you're just taking it possession by possession. He knows he has a new team. They're feeding off the success they had last year. So we're going to slowly tweak our offense. They tried to run the same ball screen out high, and the Ramblers defended it masterfully. So maybe get a little more continuity now, a little more inside out, a little less one-on-one. -on -one. His lineage from his dad to Tom Izzo to Greg Campy to Porter Moser meant he is the man for this job. He certainly is, and Drew Valentine brings back a team that has most of its stars back. Of course, Cameron Krotwig has decided to go pro. He's now playing in Belgium, but look at the four super seniors that return to this Rambler team. Well, that has to help Drew sleep a little bit easier at night, right? I mean, if there's one thing as a first-year head coach at the Division One level that you want are guys that are going to be leaders on the floor and coaches on the floor, and he certainly has it with those four guys. That's a great point, Jordan, and the thing with Ahir is he is a momentum player, but he only does it when they need him. He's not going to take shots he shouldn't, and he can really add another dimension to this Rambler team by contributing on the scoreboard with points. We know he's going to do everything else. Leighton Norris, another three. You know, let's talk about Coppin State here a little bit. If I'm Juan Dixon, and I certainly wasn't the player that he was, I would mix it up a little bit. They're continuing to go with the high ball screen, just the, you know, the space and pace, trying to do everything one-on-one. -on -one. Get some continuity in there. Get some ball movement. Set some hard screens away from the ball and see if you can get somebody open. And Coach Valentine not going to be happy with the rotation or lack of rotation by the Ramblers on defense there. And, you know, that's what he's instructing Tate Hall to go in for Schwieger is defensive acuity for the Ramblers. This is a Porter Moser thing. You're either in the right time in the right place or you aren't. There is no in-between. Why, why would you ever want to change something that's so successful? Right. And to a T, Porter Moser's defensive systems, which Drew has learned, were among, if not the best in the country last season. And one thing that he told us was he was really going to hold his players accountable on defense and then give them more leeway on offense. And we're certainly seeing it pay off this evening. To the center on every play is Tom Welch. Knocks down another. Well, Naperville, Illinois product there, Tom Welch. I'm a big fan of his. He really knows how to play the game and can stretch an offense. And, and to your point, Jordan, guys like Cam Crutwig, they have what's called a lot of gravity in basketball to where even if they don't have the ball, they're going to force the defense to hedge towards them. That's going to leave other guys wide open, your three-point shooters, your Braden Norris. And one of the things that everybody was looking to see this year was how that lack of gravity, per se, that Cameron Crutwig demanded being in the post was going to affect everybody around the three. Was it going to force the defense out to force the Loyola offense to penetrate more? But we're seeing tonight Coppin State overhelping on all the defensive pen offensive penetration and leaving threes wide open. You look at what the Ramblers did in the tournament game against Illinois last season, okay? They had an upper class experienced championship level team yep. and you see that seniority and that experience really take effect in the NCAA tournament in person well, and that's that's really why you do it Jordan right it's not just a selfish enterprise out here you know it's about the institutions it's about the educational aspect of it and it's about the involvement with the fans the camaraderie you know coach Moser did a fantastic job of engaging the uh, student body here and we see them show up tonight and then also with that, for these upperclassmen to not have their parents there for the games, their relatives, their close friends, that was the toughest thing. A coaching journey is unique to everyone, and some of them are quite, you know, <laughs> uh, unique, we'll say. And Drew has had the opportunity. He's, he's been eating steak the whole way. He had his dad. <laughs> you know, somebody that played in the Big Ten knew the game. All right, then he had great campy. Uh, one of the top coaches in, in the Horizon League. Tom Izzo, one of the all-time great colleges 
uh, college coaches ever. A lot of times in a coaching journey, sometimes you're eating steak, sometimes you're eating a hamburger. <laughs> and he's had steak the whole way, and it is showing tonight. And if Marquise can get his three-point efficiency and, and most confidence, he is going to be one of the toughest players to guard in the Missouri Valley Conference. Right now, with his penetration and slashing ability, he already is. But if he can add that extra dimension of being able to co confidently shoot a three and knock it down, there's not too many people that are going to be able to guard him. St. Thomas certainly with the... Uh, I, he gets the shoe of the game award for me. The, those things are pretty impressive. <laughs> I love the energy he plays with. You mentioned it. So if you can't see the guy in person, meet with him, meet with his family, his high school coach, his teachers, you know, it's tough to get a real good feel for them. And for the Ramblers and Coach Valentine to go all the way to Nebraska and find a guy like him and bring him all the way to Chicago, again, that's capitalizing on that success recruiting-wise, which you have to do. We get free tacos or anything if they get 100 here? Or? Well, I think that Bill buys his tacos okay. after the game. <laughs> Here's St. Thomas. Oh, what a finish. What Coach Valentine's going to be happy with is the execution that his team had on the offensive and defensive end. Completely took Coppin State out of what they were trying to do as a team. And then offensively, so efficient, finding the right uh, man, the right time, and contributions from the entire team. No question. The defensive end of the floor, as Chris said, is not something that we should overlook because Coppin State came in a team last year that shot a lot of threes by volume, a team that wanted to come in and hit the threes tonight. They were 5 of 32 from the field in the first half, which made the difference. They finished shooting 22% from the field and 2 of 25 from three. Yeah, and that's just suffocating defense. We saw that a lot last season from the Ramblers. And, and another stat that shows that on both offense and defense is 31 assists for the Ramblers and four assists for Coppin State. That, that isn't just bad offense by Coppin State. That's making it very difficult to get a pass, to run any any sort of offensive system that could be successful. 